दक्षिणा सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता स्मरिया गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम परिज्ञानाश्रम श्री गुरुशंकर परिज्ञानाश्रम शंकर सदुरु केशव वामन कृष्ण पांडुरंग आनंद परिज्ञान गुरु सद्यो जात शंकर सदुरु गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओम सहनावतो सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विषा वह ओं शाति 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 पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणन स्वयं व्यासन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंदधा भगवदगीते भवत्षिणी यं ब्रह्मा वरुणेन्द्र रुद्रमरुत सुन्वती दिव्यस्थव वेद सांगपद्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानावस्थित तत्कन मनसा पश्य योगिन यम न विदुसुरा सुरगणा देवाय तस्म नम नौ ऑल दिस टाइम इन द नाइन्थ चैप्टर वी सॉ दैट लॉर्ड कृष्णा टॉक्ड अबाउट द वेरियस वेज इन विच ए भक्ता कैन कनेक्ट टू ईश्वरा he talked about prithak rupa or ek rupa ishvara bhakti where one particular name and form in the name of or in the form of one sishta devata is connected with as ishvara and this is a typical karma yogi or an upasaka and then krishna says that from here from ek rupa ishvara bhakti a mumukshu has to climb up the ladder of vishwarupa or aneka rupa ishwara bhakti where this person this mumukshu has to appreciate and see that the entire manifestation the entire jagat is nothing but the manifestation of ishwara that is the vishwarupa ishwara bhakti which here lord krishna is stressing upon in the 9th chapter because in the 10th and 11th chapters the vishwarupa ishwara bhakti or aneka rupa ishwara bhakti is going to be talked about in very much greater detail therefore here he says that for a madhyama adhikari like us for madhyama adhikaris or intermediate adhikaris like us one has to graduate or one has to rise from prithak rupa ishwara bhakti to vishwarupa ishwara bhakti and ultimately the goal of a bhakta is to understand that i am that nirguna arupa brahman not different from that brahman which is called as arupa ishwara bhakti or nirguna ishwara gnanam where i do not see any bheda between me and brahman but right now lord is stressing on vishwarupa ishwara bhakti hi and this is a gradual spiritual kind of a rise you know where we start with one ishta devata name and form then start appreciating that whatever is there is nothing but the manifestation of ishwara and ultimately whatever is there is nothing but that unseen avyaktam 
Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Adhishtanam, Brahma. That is the reality and that is the truth of Ishvara also. That is the ultimate Tattvam of Ishvara also. This is where is the final goal of understanding this knowledge. Now, after that, Lord Krishna talked about different kinds of bhaktas where a Sakama Bhakta uses Ishvara. He says he uses me, uses Ishvara as what? He uses me as means to attain personal material goals. And such a Sakama Bhakta will no doubt get his goals fulfilled, which are finite goals, which are personal goals. But at the same time, he'll keep coming back again and again and again, travel from loka to loka, depending upon whatever punya and papa he has gained. But then that ultimate goal, the ultimate purushartha of moksha purushartha, which should be the final and the ultimate goal of every person, every human being, he does not attain that. Whereas the Nishkama Bhakta, who not only uses me, Ishvara, as the means, but also I am the very end itself. For a Nishkama Bhakta, there's no question of fulfilling any personal desires or personal goals, but to know me in my Tattvam, the way I am. Initially, to know me as the Vishwarupa Ishvara, and then to know me as that Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Adhishtana, Brahman of this entire universe. That is the final goal. And therefore, such a Nishkama Bhakta, Yad Gatva, Na Nivartante. That means he has attained his final goal of reaching me or Moksha. Then we saw that till the 29th verse, Bhagavan was talking about the various Bhaktas and also the results or the phalam of Nishkama Bhakti and Sakama Bhakti. Now from the 30th verse up till the end of this chapter, the next five verse, Lord Krishna is going to talk about the Mahima or the Stuti of Ishvara Bhakti. It doesn't matter when you connect to me, where you connect to me. You may connect with me as an Artha Bhakta, no problem. You may connect with me as an Artharthi Bhakta, no problem. Initially, you may use me as a mere means to attain your personal goals, no problem. But then you may connect with me as Artha, Artharthi or even a Jignasu Bhakta, a true Mumukshu. And ultimately, all of them are going to reach that ultimate goal of Moksha, which is what is called as a Jnani Bhakta. That is the ultimate goal of Moksha. And every Bhakta will reach there sometime or the other. But what matters is that one must be willing to connect to me and one must be willing to me by bhakta to be a bhakta and also he says that it does not matter who this person is any person even with a questionable character with a questionable conduct a person who is living or leading an adharmic life even such a person can connect to me and be a bhakta if there is this dhrida nishchaya and resolve. And even such a durachari, even such a person of an adharmic conduct will definitely find that he will rise in the ladder of the spiritual growth and one day he will reach me. This is the mahima of the bhakti which Lord wants to explain in the next five verses. So we'll go to the 30th verse now. So he says... Apichet sudura charaha bhajate ma mananya bhak sadhureva samantavyaha samyag vyavasito hisaha. So here Bhagwan says that even if a durachari, apichet sudura charaha, even if a person with an adharmic conduct. A person who has been living a life of adharma, a person of questionable conduct, even such a person, a durachari, if he has made a resolve that he's going to change and that he's going to connect to me, Ishvara, then automatically such a person is going to disconnect himself from adharma and he connects to dharma only. What is said is, I as Ishwara is nothing but dharma. I am dharma. Ishwara is dharma. And a person 
who connects with me, even if he happens to be of a questionable conduct. We have got so many examples like Maharshi Valmiki himself, how you know he was living a life of adharma. And then once that particular resolve or nishchaya was made, what was that nishchaya that was made? The right nishchaya, right resolve that, yes, now onwards, I'm going to connect to Ishwara and I'm no longer going to live a life of adharma. This very nishchaya, this very resolve itself is enough to connect anybody with me. So he says, Krishna says that nobody is exempt from connecting with me. Nobody can be said that you are not a bhakta. You don't deserve to connect with me. No, he says, even a sudura charaha, even an extremely adharmic person who has led a very, very basal life, even such a person, bhajate maam ananya bhak, he is willing to connect with me. He is willing to connect to me, ananya bhak, nishchayena, with the nishchaya, that with the right resolve, that enough of this. Does it mean that a person can connect to Ishwara and still be a durachari? No, it is not possible. It is not at all possible because, you know, once a person comes under the grace of Ishwara, there's no question of aligning oneself with a dharma. He automatically aligns himself with dharmas. Therefore, he says, Ananya Bhak Bhajate. He completely surrenders to me. He wants to be under my grace. Such a person, su durachara pi. Even such a person who is a durachari, he can start at any time. There is nothing that bhakti cannot be has to be started at this age or that age or this time or that time. Any time one can connect to Ishwara. Why? Because whatever is there is nothing but Ishwara only. I have delineated uh, myself. I have delineated myself from Ishwara. But Ishwara is connected to each and every jiva as Antaryami. Ishwara is connected to each and every jiva as the Adhishtanam. But then I have to decide. I have to make a nishchaya. I have to make a resolve that I am going to complete this circuit by connecting to Ishwara. And then no time is a wrong time. No time is ever late. And no person, whatever may be the character of the person, can be kept away from Ishwara's grace because it's all flowing. Ishwara's grace is everywhere. It is for me to be open to that grace and tap that grace. And if I'm willing for that, then I become what? I connect. This is a bhakta. A bhakta is having the right resolve to connect himself or herself to Ishwara and opens up to the grace of Ishwara. Whereas an adharmic person is not yet open to the grace of Ishwara. Therefore, here he says, Sudura charaha api bhajate mamananya bhag sadhureva samantavyaha. He should be considered as a sadhu, irrespective of what has been his previous lifestyle. He has to be considered as a sadhureva samantavya. Samyag vyavasito hisaha. What is the meaning of samyag vyavasito? Samyag vyavasayaha. The right resolve, the correct nishchaya, the right nishchaya, the decision that now I'm going to connect to Ishwara and change my life. I'm going to surrender to Ishwara because this way of life, which I have led all this time, has not really given me any kind of a peace, security and happiness. And now I'm going to surrender to Ishwara. This resolve, this nishchaya is what is called as samyag vyavasthitaha, the person who is in proper decision making mind, the one who has made a proper decision where he has decided to be a bhakta of Ishwara. He may start as Artha Bhakti. He may start as Artha Bhakti. But then never is it too late in anybody's life to connect to Ishwara because Ishwara's grace is all flowing. Now, what happens to such a person who has ultimately made up his mind, made the resolve of connecting to Ishwara? What really happens to such a person is told in the next verse. What is it? Kshipram bhavati dharmatma shashvat shantim nigachati 
ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಪ್ರತಿಜಾನೀಹಿ ನ ಮೇ ಭಕ್ತ ಪ್ರಣಶ್ಯತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನ ಮೇ ಭಕ್ತ ಪ್ರಣಶ್ಯತಿ ನೋ ಭಕ್ತ ಆಫ್ ಮೈನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಎವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಫಾಲ್ ಮೈ ಭಕ್ತ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಫಾಲ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲಿ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೌನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಒನ್ಸ್ ಪಾಪ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಾರಬ್ಧ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ ಗೋ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಅಪ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೌನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ ಗೋ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲಿ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷು ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ದೇರ್ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಫಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಭಕ್ತ ನ ಮೇ ಭಕ್ತ ಪ್ರಣಶ್ಯತಿ ಇತಿ ಹೇ ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಪ್ರತಿಜಾನೀಹಿ ಪ್ರತಿಜಾನಿ ಹಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮೇ ಯು ನೋ ಫಾರ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಯು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಮೇ ಯು ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಪ್ರತಿಜ್ಞಾ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರತಿಜಾನಿ ಹಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರತಿಜ್ಞಾ ಕುರು ಹೇ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಮೇ ಯು ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ರಿಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಮೇ ಯು ಮೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರತಿಜ್ಞಾ ಮೇ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಪ್ರತಿಜ್ಞಾ ರೂಪೇಣ that this is my promise that may bhakta my bhakta whoever it may be he may be artha bhakta artharthi bhakta jignasu bhakta name pranashyati kshipram bhavati sah dharmatma that person kshipram okay in time krishna doesn't say when how many lives nothing kshipram very soon not very late such a person who has connected to me who is my bhakta ಕ್ಷಿಪ್ರಂ ಭವತಿ ಧರ್ಮಾತ್ಮ ನೌ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ದುರಾಚಾರಿ ಭೂಮ್ ವಿ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸು ದುರಾಚಾರಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಲೆಡ್ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಅಧರ್ಮ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೀ ವನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೀ ವನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಹಿ ದಟ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಮೈ ಭಕ್ತ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕ್ಷಿಪ್ರಂ ಭವತಿ ಧರ್ಮಾತ್ಮ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಎ ಧರ್ಮಾತ್ಮ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮಾತ್ಮ ಹಿ ನೋ ಲಾಂಗರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಮ ಆಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಹಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಅರ್ಥ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಅಟೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಕಾಮ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನ್ ಅಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ದ ಅರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಸ್ whereas now such a person when he connects to me he cannot be a dharmic because i am the very dharma connecting with me is connecting with dharma and therefore such a person becomes a dharmatma in course of time that means he becomes a dharma pradhana vyakti he values dharma more than artha kama and gradually he starts valuing through that dharma that punya which he has accumulated he starts valuing knowing me in my tatvam he gradually turns to become a jignasu bhakta and here we must understand that lord krishna is not talking to an uttama adhikari or a gnani in bhagavad gita he is only talking to a madhyama adhikari that means in between we are all in between we are neither absolute uh, you know uh, abhaktas nor are we gnanis we are somewhere in between so the entire bhagavad gita taking arjuna as the prototype lord krishna talks to a madhyama adhikari in some instances he talks to a adhama adhikari also like once you start when you start as a karma yogi you are only holding on to one particular ishta devata as a name and form and that he says is the lowest form of bhakti but then one can rise above that and when one reaches the capacity to appreciate the entire jagat as a manifestation of ishvara vishwarupa ishvara bhakti is for a madhyama adhikari therefore in the entire bhagavad gita up till the 13th chapter lord krishna is giving more stress on vishwarupa ishvara bhakti because he is talking to a madhyama adhikari uttama adhikari anyway is a gnani bhakti has already gone to the arupa or nirguna brahma vichara but then the majority of the bhaktas are we here in between 
ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಇನಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಏಕರೂಪ ಈಶ್ವರ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕರ್ಮಯೋಗ ಏಕರೂಪ ಈಶ್ವರ ಉಪಾಸನ ನೌ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಸ್ ದ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಧಿಕಾರಿ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅವರ್ ವಿಜನ್ ಟು ಸಿ ದಟ್ ದ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಜಗತ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಸೋ ದಟ್ when i connect to ishwara as vishwarupa ishwara which is going to very very in detail describe in the next two chapters then my mind is prepared to be an uttama adhikari where i get exposed to the shastra and guru this gnanam and it is very easy for me to understand the tatvam of ishwara as nirguna brahman adhishtana brahman satyam gnanam anantam brahma right now i am not having that capacity to understand this tatvam of ishara which lord krishna will start talking about from the 13th chapter onwards but now up till the 12th chapter till the end of the 12th chapter lord krishna wants to prepare us the madhyama adhikaris to view the entire creation the entire manifestation as nothing but vishwarupa ishwara and so he says here this person this durachari also kshipram in course of time becomes a dharmatma and is able to go from artha bhakta to artarthi bhakta to jignasu bhakta and ultimately he will be capable of going to arupa ishwara bhakti or nirguna ishwara gnanam also so we have lot of these examples like you know in uh, our uh, you know we have um, valmiki maharishi then in buddhist stories we have anguli mala so like this we have many examples of people who kshipram bhavati dharmatma shashvat shantim nighachati ultimately they will attain the same goal of moksha purushartha as a person a dharmatma who has connected with me so then next he goes to another you know another part of this particular mahima of bhakti where he says that's it basically lord krishna wants to say that it is never too late to connect to ishwara it's never too late to be bhakta and whatever you have been earlier does not really cause any kind of a hindrance for any person to connect to ishwara anyone everybody at any age with whatever may be the background that the person has had is a bhakta can be a bhakta only what it needs is to be open to the grace of ishwara also to be willingly having the capacity having made up the mind samyak vyavasthitah that i have made the nischaya that i am going to connect to the lord for my future further <clears throat> spiritual development and ultimately i am going to know in tatvam what is the ultimate truth of this ishwara which is moksha which all the shastras say i have heard it i know what the shastra says but right now i am not capable of understanding what that nirguna brahman is what that abheda between me and that brahman is but then in this way lord krishna has laid down this path from ekarupa anekarupa to arupa ishwara bhakti and i am going to go on that path and this is i am samyak vyavasthitah in this way now in the next verse lord krishna talks about certain other disadvantaged people now the verse if you read the verse word by word you know the vachartha of the word may become very confusing but we have to understand this verse in a very very clear way otherwise it looks as if lord krishna is being very partial or lord lord krishna is you know kind of uh, keeping aside some people it is not like that this particular verse we have to understand very clearly the way the implied meaning of this now i'll explain to you what it means now there are certain people who are handicapped or disadvantaged either physically emotionally intellectually or even you know from their birth itself in the situation or in the families or wherever they are born there are lot of this disadvantaged handicapped people even such people with severe handicaps with severe disadvantages can be bhaktas it's just that they need to be connected to me with that decision they should have that absolute right decision 
and that is the only way that they can connect to me i take care of all their disadvantages i take care of all of their handicaps and see that they also rise or grow in the spiritual on the spin the you know this path that i have laid out and even the most disadvantaged group of people can attain me and attain moksha so what is this 32nd verse now mam hi partavya paashritya ye pisyu papayonayah striyo vaishyas tatha shudraha te piyanti param gatim so here he says mam hi vyapashritya he partha mam hi vyapashritya when they surrender to me <coughs> when people surrender to me who are these people other than the ones like brahmanas or brahmacharis whatever it is there are so many disadvantage groups of people who are they when they surrender to me ye pisyu who who are they number 1 papa yonayah papa yonayah means those because of their papas papa karmas are born in families or born in cultures which are not conducive to this kind of a spiritual growth <coughs> you know they may have punya for material you know they may have a lot of punya okay you may have a lot of money but then you are born in saudi arabia what is the point is there any option for you that culture itself is a disadvantaged culture for you know connecting oneself to ishwara with this kind of a bhakti of course they have their own you know connection with ishwara but the culture conducive culture like our culture like our you know born in our kind of a guru parampara ashraya you know right from childhood we have got that advantage of being in this culture secondly those who are born in families where there is no value for this kind of a spiritual connection with the lord spiritual growth like in very very poor families where even you know two meals in a day is something which is difficult where is the time where is the inclination for these things or like prahlada who was born to the father who was a total asura and a nastika okay so papayoni papayoni means those who are born in situations in cultures in families or to parents who absolutely have no inclination to such things and a full life of such a person may be wasted merely because this person person has no exposure at all to these things classical example of a papayoni we can say is prahlada born to you know hiranyakashipu so what happened ultimately he surrendered to lord narayana and narayana came in the form of narasimha avatara and what happened he gave that whatever was needed whatever was the wish of pralada to be a bhakta and an ajignasu bhakta and then of course he is considered to be one of the best in the asuras who is a nyahu attained moksha and became a gnani bhakta which lord krishna himself is going to talk about in the next chapter so this is papa yonayah next we have three other groups which have been told here striyaha vaishyaha shudraha okay now we have to understand one thing striyaha means women now does it mean that the women are disadvantaged group does it mean that the women have no scope for moksha no our scriptures have never said that in the vedic days and the times of vedas the women also were instructed by the gurus the upanishads were taught to the women also but then later on because of so many changes that took place yes probably women became disadvantaged because for them it was difficult to get exposed to this kind of a teaching to the gurus etc but here when lord krishna talks about striyaha vaishyaha and shudraha vaishyaha who who are vaishya the commerce people who are indulging in you know commercial activity those who sell by krishi vyavasaya and uh, you know go samrakshanam all these vaishyas you know we have seen that vaishya shudras basically those who are you know involved in the service of the other three varnas striya 
Now here what Krishna wants to say is, this is not the physical stri. This is not the, you know, the, you know, guna stri. What he's talking about here is, if a, you know, the guna of a stri or the, the, the mental predisposition of a stri is said to be a person who's highly entangled, highly kind of involved in the family, in the children with a lot of attachment. Now, this is called as the gunastri, not a janmastri. I may be a janmastri, but then I may not have the gunas of a stri where I'm able to discriminate. I'm able to stand apart, you know, from my family and from my children and from those people around me. And where I'm able to deal with my moha, I'm able to deal with that undue attachment. Then gunastri being you know, disadvantaged by this kind of a highly emotional intellect, it may be very difficult for a gunastri to concentrate upon this kind of a knowledge, which requires a lot of commitment to this knowledge, either because of lack of time or because of responsibilities of the family and the children or gunataya, that kind of an undue kind of an involvement, attachment with the family and children, it may not be very easily possible for a gunastri. Now, this a man can be also a gunastri. Okay, stri here means it is talking about the, you know, the mental disposition of a person, a highly emotional and a highly, you know, a person who's highly attached, highly entangled with the family and children, such a, you know, intellect is called as the gunastri. And it can be anybody. It can be a stri. It can be a purusha. It can even be anybody. So anybody who has this kind of an intellect, this kind of a mind will have difficulty in sitting for long hours following this, understanding the Guru's words through Shastra, Shastra words through the Guru, this may be difficult for a Gunastri. Same here as Vaishyas. Here Krishna is not talking about uh, Jati Vaishyas by birth. He is not talking about Vaishyas by birth. Who are, who is here he is talking about what is called as the Guna Vaishyas. What is a Guna Vaishya? We have already seen in the fourth chapter that a guna vaishya, sorry, in the third chapter, a guna vaishya is who? The one who has rajas predominant, followed by tamas and then sattva. Okay. Such a person is a person who is all the time interested in personal gains, personal motives. And the mind is all the time running here and there because it is a rajopradhana mind. Therefore, such a rajopradhana mind again cannot be involved in Ishwara Bhakti in the form of admit, I mean, in the form of, you know, exposing oneself to this knowledge. So what he says is moksha purushartha may be very difficult for a guna stri, for a guna vaishya, which is rajo pradhana and also shudraha, where the disposition of a shudra is tamo guna pradhana. What is tamo guna pradhana? Absolutely like a rock you know, inertia, not interested in doing anything, doesn't want to make any effort to do anything. He has to be pushed for everything, forcibly made to do things. That is actually the mental disposition of a Shudra. So here, a highly emotional mental state like a Gunastri, a highly Rajoguna Pradhana intellect like a Vaishya or a highly Tamoguna Pradhana intellect like a Shudra, this kind of a mind, this kind of an intellect will find that they are not able to hold on to this Jnanam and they may not be able to reach Moksha so easily. And therefore, he says, these people who are born in families to parents, who do not have any inclination to such a thing, they are disadvantaged. 
people who have this highly emotional intellect are also disadvantaged they are not able to see clearly the emotions and the ragat veshas always come and they always veil your discriminating intellect so the discrimination comes down a rajoguna pradhana vaishya the discriminative capacity comes down because here it is how to do this thing how to do that thing how to put everybody aside how to you know uh, excel in my you know in uh, you know in material gains material pursuits so it's more of a material pursuit therefore he says that such disadvantaged people also those who are born in papa yoneha out of papa in families like this or those who are gunastris guna vaishyas or guna shudras even such people can connect with me with bhakti and ultimately my bhakti can being connected with me i will see that their intellects they become more of sattva guna pradhana a highly emotional intellect will gradually become sattva guna pradhana a highly rajo guna intellect gradually will become sattva guna pradhana it may take some time it may take lives but then none of these people are exempt brahma gnanam is not a patent of anybody it is open to everybody that's why we have seen also so many people who are called shudras and other things how by bhakti himself by itself they were able to ultimately reach the highest goal of moksha we have so many stories like that in our kannada literature we have that bedara kannappa and all this so many of these who have been merely you know kind of even if you take you know kanakadasa purandara dasa he was a vaishya kanakadasa he was a you know a sh shepherd a shudra now what what happened to these people it is just the mere bhakti by which they were really able to climb up the ladder from artha bhakti to arthartha bhakti to jignasu bhakti and ultimately reach that ultimate end called as moksha therefore krishna is saying hey arjuna a durachari is also not you know to be discarded a durachari whenever he wants he can connect with me and i will take him to the ultimate purushartha of moksha purushartha in due course of time disadvantage handicapped people like those born in such families where there is no value for ishvara even such people or people who have intellects which are highly emotional intellects which are highly rajo rajoguna oriented or tamoguna oriented even such people need not really have any problem what they need to do is have the right resolve the right nischaya samyag vyavasthitah they have to be vya samyag vyavasthitah and then they have to connect to me and what will i do i will take care of them the only thing is that they have to hold on to me with bhakti with surrender and i will never give give up on them and there will be never a spiritual fall for a bhakta at any time anywhere wherever he may be whatever he may be so in the next verse bhagwan says if such disadvantaged people if disadvantaged people can be helped to reach moksha purushartha by merely connecting to me and surrendering to me what about those people who are already guna brahmanas or guna kshatriyas and who already have that kind of a you know this kind of an exposure to shastra exposure to ishvara bhakti as a part of the family culture itself born in a culture where there is a value for it what about such people you already have it those of you who are already born in cultures and families where there is a value for this and people who are already guna brahmanas people who are already or guna kshatriyas for whom their rajoguna is backed by sattva guna so what about all this sattva guna pradhana people it is much easier for them and their spiritual growth will be much much faster if i can be there for all this severely handicapped and disadvantaged groups of people what about those who already have an advantage on their side let them not lose out on this opportunity 
to reach me for them this growth and this reaching me or moksha or understanding me to be that nirguna brahman to be nothing different from you that brahma jiva abheda knowledge or understanding which is called as moksha is not really difficult that's what he's saying in the next verse or the 33rd verse so he says kim puna brahmana punya ha bhakta rajarshayas tatha anit Yamasukham lokam imam prapya bhajaswamam. So he says, Kim punaha. If what I have talked about in the previous verse, such people can be helped by me by surrendering to me. Kim punaha. What to talk about? Brahmanaha. Not jati brahmanaha. Not by birth. Guna brahmanaha. Those who are already sattva guna pradhanaha. They may be stri. They may be purushas, they may be brahmacharis, they may be grahastas, they may be sannyasis, anybody but those who are sattva guna pradhanaha, punyaha, those who are already blessed with this sattva guna pradhana intellect, bhaktaha, rajarshayaha tatha, those, you know, kshatriyas who have been rajas and at the same time rishis, those kshatriyas who have like Vishwamitra, like Ashwapati, like Janaka, those who are Kshatriyas, but who are Sattva Guna Pradhanas, those who are, you know, doing the duties of their, whatever they're supposed to do as kings. At the same time, you know, they're so Sattva Guna Pradhana that they're able to understand this Brahmagnanam or Atmagnanam without any difficulty what to talk about such people what about the raja rishis what about the brahmanas guna brahmanas what about all these people who already have made a beginning who already have an intellect which is conducive to this knowledge which knowledge the knowledge of my para prakriti the knowledge of me my tattvam the knowledge of me as the adhishtanam satyam jnanam anantam brahma this Atmagnanam or Brahmagnanam, <coughs> these people who already have that advantage for them, what about them? They will definitely get it. <coughs> and Arjuna, who are you? You are an advantaged, you are a person with advantage because you are a Kshatriya, a Dharmic Kshatriya. At the same time, you are Sattva Guna Pradhana. And therefore, you have surrendered to me, you know, as a shishya. And now, what for you, Arjuna? Anityam asukham lokam imam prapya. You have already come into this anityam asukham lokam. You have come here. All of you are already here. Even the brahmanas, all these rajarshaya, the advantaged people, the disadvantaged people, handicapped people, durachari's, all of you are here in this world. What kind of a world is this? This is anityam, asukham, lokam, prapya. What is required, Arjuna? Bhajaswamam. You already are advantaged. You already are one or two steps above. You already are exposed to this shastra. You are already a raja with you know, who is following dharma. You already have me, this avatara, Krishna, you know, Narayana as your guru. You have surrendered to me. So what else do you want? Continue to hold on to me. That's what he's saying. Therefore, for all of us, this is the promise. We may come from any background. We may come from any kind of, born in any kind of families. But if my moksha purushartha nishchaya has been done, if my purushartha in this life is ultimately going to be moksha purushartha, doesn't matter if I'm a durachari, doesn't matter where in which culture and which family I'm born, doesn't matter if I'm born in a Vaishya family or a Shudra family or whether I'm born as a woman, it does not matter. Gunataya, whatever disadvantages I may be having, by birth, whatever disadvantages I may be having, let all of them, let all these people surrender to me and I will see that I will take them to the ultimate goal, which is nothing but moksha. And this is Lord Krishna's promise. And now we come to the final verse of the ninth chapter. And this 34th verse is what is 
very frequently chanted and our guru anandashrama swami ji shrimat anandashrama swami ji it was his favorite it was his favorite verse of bhagavad gita and here what lord krishna is saying is he is tracing the life of a bhakta from the step 1 up till the ultimate knowing me as not separate from you so the entire cycle of a bhakta from the very first step to the ultimate moksha is sketched here by krishna so now he says manmana bhava mad bhakta मध्याजी मामस्कुरु मामे वैश्यसी युक्त आत्मा मत्परायण नौ वी हेव टू री अरेज दीज वर्ड्स अ लिटिल बिट टू गो थ्रू स्टेप बाय स्टेप द जर्नी ऑफ ए भक्त स्टेप बाय स्टेप द लाइफ स्टाइल ऑफ ए भक्त so the first word we are taking is and for everything we have to add bhava bhava b may you be may you become may you be so the first word we have to take is mad bhakto bhava the third word man mana bhava mad bhakto bhava we have to add bhava man mana bhava mad bhakto bhava madhya ji bhava mam namaskuru okay fine now we have to understand it then mat parayana bhava the fifth word so now we will start here with the first word we take is mad bhakto bhava the first the first step in the life cycle of a bhakta mad bhakto bhava means in whichever way you want you connect with me artha bhaktya artharthi bhaktya it is okay you use me now ishwara as a means to attain your goals personal goals material goals does not matter this is the first step so just connect to me be my bhakta start with artha bhakti start with artharthi bhakti no problem at all therefore first step develop bhakti in me initial stage first step mat bhakto bhava then the second word we have to take is mat parayana bhava mat parayano bhava now second step where krishna is saying it's okay in the first step you used me as the means to attain your finite definite goals but in the second step here you the same bhakta may me ishwara may i ishwara be your goal itself okay mat parayana paramam ayanam the final goal the ultimate goal let me be your ultimate goal therefore in the first step you used me as a means to reach your personal goals in the next step second then the lifestyle of a bhakta mat parayano bhava may i be your goal itself but then you have to use me as a means also to reach me therefore understand that you are coming to me you are surrendering to me to know me here not to get your personal desires fulfilled but to know me itself so the second word the second step in the lifestyle of a bhakta mat parayana bhava then the next one man mana bhava the first word man mana bhava what is the meaning of man mana bhava let me be let ishwara or me be the constant remembrance all the time once i become your final goal then just choosing me to be the final goal and leaving me or dropping we will not work here arjuna man mana bhava as the final goal may you always think of me nididhyasanam kuru all the time you try to you know be connected to me the way shastra has explained me the way the guru has explained or described me let there be that constant remembrance so man mana bhava means let ishwara become a constant remembrance in and through your daily life okay this is the third step okay that is what man mana bhava then 
the fourth word madhyaji bhava means what whatever you are doing karma wise whatever karma you are doing whatever action you are doing whatever experience you are experiencing offer them to me as worship madarpanam kurushva we saw that just about three verses back yadyat karoshi tat madarpanam kurushva he said just three verses back isn't it whatever you do you offer it as puja to me because initially he said you don't have to do anything patram pushpam phalam toyam is enough even that you don't have to do may you offer all that you are doing madhya ji bhava whatever you are doing as a family person as a householder as a brahmachari as whatever may be your profession whatever you are doing offer it to me let all your actions be my worship as it madarpanam kurushva offer them to me so madhya ji bhava so what is the first step connect to me as an artha bhakta artarthi bhakta use me give me some bribes say that if you do this i will give you this i will come to tirupati and do that doesn't matter do all that use me as a means for your personal goals no problem second step let that final goal be me mat parayana third step man mana bhava let me your goal be a constant remembrance in you all the time remembering me like the tambura shruti like the laya that is constantly remembered by a musician constantly remembered by a dancer there they don't have to make any effort constantly remembering it so may i become your constant remembrance constantly thinking of me man mana bhava then madhyaji madhyaji means what offer all that you are doing as an offering to me okay so you become a karma yogi also and you become an upasaka at the same time because all your karma becomes a worship to me and when you are offering all your karma as a worship to me all your karma will be a dharmic karma it will be a karma that has to be done because you will be offering the best that you can do to me therefore madhyaji bhava last one mam namaskuru means what surrender to my grace after you have done all these things what else can you do i have to take you now you know you have to you have connected with me in all this way starting from artha artharthi bhakta where then you i became i became your param ayanam i became you became mat parayana then you became what man mana that means all that i became manmana that means what all the time you are thinking of me constantly you start offering everything that you do as worship to me madhya ji and with this what have you done you have surrendered yourself completely to me with these four steps there is nothing more for you to do now it is i who have to take you up and show me show you my true nature yesha yam vrunute it said you know ultimately this brahman reveals itself to that person who really deserves to know my swarupam that's what is said in the upanishads that until here you have a free will okay you can use me as a means you can make me the end your goal itself you can constantly think of me and you can offer everything that you do as madarpanam as you know worship but then here your free will is over correct now what is left you have to surrender to me your entire will is surrender to me now it is my duty to reveal my true tatvam to you as what as that which is the adhishthanam of everything maya tatam idam sarvam you will know that what is my tatvam what is that sukshma tatvam sukshma smukshma taram consciousness what am i what is this tatvam of me what is the meaning of brahman what is my para prakriti which is not very easy for you to understand but you have taken all the four steps that can be taken by you and now it is my job to take you to the final goal where i reveal my para prakriti to you there is nothing to be done a nadi a river can go up till the sagara till the ocean ultimately it is the 
ocean which has to ultimately embrace and take the you know the river into it the, till then till it reaches that's all after that the river has lost its individuality and ultimately the river up till it goes to the ocean it's its effort then there ultimately it surrenders to the ocean and the ocean has to literally absorb it embrace the river into itself similarly here after the fourth step mam namaskur guru means what surrender to me now like an ocean of grace i am surrender to my grace beyond this you cannot do anything i have to embrace you into my grace and then at the right time at the proper time when you are capable of understanding i will reveal my true prakriti para prakriti my swarupam to you so therefore mam namaskuru and then ma meva yeshyasi you are coming to me you will be coming to me only coming to me means what you will not be different from me you will understand that there is no bheda between me ishvara and you jeeva that is what is called as ma meva yeshyasi moksha prapti hi you will not be separate from me this understanding this knowledge which comes by my revelation of my tatvam to you that is called as mameva yeshasi yukti evam atmanam okay evam atmanam yuktva okay here he says in this way with this yukti with this kind of a you know step you know it's a step ladder like this is the life's journey of a bhakta starting from a durachari to an artha artharthi bhakta and then going ultimately to moksha purushartha this is ultimately my grace and you are surrendering to my grace and with this the ninth chapter is completed and we have come to the halfway mark we have completed so now the uttarardha or the next half of bhagavad gita is going to talk about the vishwarupa darshanam as to how to really behold this maya tatam idam sarvam principle this brahman principle how to withhold it in the vishwarupa darshanam is going to be the subject of the next two chapters 10 chapter and 11 chapter and then it's going to be bhakti all over again the various steps of bhakti that have been talked about krishna is going to again talk about it at five levels and then from the 13th chapter lord krishna is going to go to arupa ishvara bhakti or nirguna brahma gnanam or abheda jeeva ishvara abheda gnanam is going to be talked about in the last six chapters so with this we have come to the end of the first half and i wish and pray to ishvara to bhagwan krishna vasudeva krishna that we all may have the capacity to continue and stay with the rest of the bhagavad gita the next the latter half of bhagavad gita om nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushaka avastha shambhavi mestu prasannostu guru sada सर्वे सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य तो माँ कचि दुखमाया ओं शाति 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 ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय